Hey guys, welcome back. BDCKR here. And we're back with our weekly recap of all things injustice. It is the week of September 22nd, 2022. Current challenge is Blackest Night Batman. It is a one week repeat. Required characters are on theme Catwoman, Nightwing, and Joker, who are available at the cheapest level as bronze, bronze, and silver all in the store great entry point for all new players which is exactly what we like so you're limited only by your ability to win fights and not by your ability to get specific characters that might be hard to attain his passive is surging darkness batman deals more damage as his opponent's health depletes blackest knight characters receive an additional 10 percent unblockable chance for each blackest knight member on their team attack is 1250 health is 1000 Last available, November 25th, 2021. So he's got medium-high stats, 1250 attack, 1000 health. If it's not going to be that high, better to have more of that in the damage. For every 1% of his enemies currently missing health, Batman does 1% increased damage, which is perfect. This is one of the few characters in the history of Injustice who got a buff as opposed to a nerf. In the old days, his attack used to be only 1,000, and his health used to be only 800. And the funny thing was, he used to have boosted damage overnight. I think at the time, there were no other Blackest Knight teammates, so it probably made sense that there was no teammate passive. But clearly, that's changed. So both his existing passive improved, because, you know, between midnight and 6 a.m. in the morning, you get a 20% damage boost. I mean, before Gears, that was decent. After Gears, it's not that great. So you can get, you know, it's pretty reasonable, pretty easy to get at least a 20% damage boost in the course of the fight when you bring the opponent's health down. And with this new teammate passive, on a Blackest Night team, basically everybody has a 30% unblockable chance of all attacks, which is great. So when we're talking about a, a Blackest Night team... I believe Flash and Batman are probably the two most important ones to have on the team. And adding Hawkgirl basically doubles the hardiness of the entire team. That's your optimum, optimal, optimal Blackest Knight team. And if you don't have them is when you start having to play around with it. But if you want one really good team, that's it. So this is 122 weeks now in a row of a repeating pattern that first appeared May 2020. And that is two complete runs of a 43-week cycle. And we are into the 36th week of the third 43-week cycle. If the pattern holds, next week is going to be Dawn of Justice Wonder Woman. Reminder, there are still 23 challenge characters missing. Really, we should have a cycle of 66 characters, and it's really only 43. This week's multiplayer reward is Totem, which becomes Tantu Totem. When maxed out, its effects are 30% crit chance on specials, 35% of maximum power on Tagen, which is essentially one bar of power, and restore 100% power for specials if enemy was knocked out with it. And when evolved, you get 100% power back for special if enemy took no damage. Last available February 17th, 2022. This is now 90 weeks in a row of a consistent pattern. It is two complete cycles of a 31 reward sequence, and it's 28 weeks in the third cycle. So in another three weeks, we'll have completed three cycles of this. Another three weeks, yep. And unlike the challenge cycle, the multiplayer cycle is complete. There's nothing missing. If the pattern holds, next week should be Scarecrow's ventilator mask. We go from one of the best gears this week to one of the worst gears next week. So let's talk about Tantu Totem. I don't think it's arguable at all that this is the single most important piece of gear, bar none. Whatever qualifications you might make, whatever you might say, I don't think there's anything more important than Tantu Totem. And yeah, not only did it Tantu Totem so historically, Tantu Totem shifted the game from basic damage to specials, and it changed how specials were managed. So even though specials have always done more damage, the time it took to generate power 
was prohibitive to making the specials your overall strategy. You needed to do basic damage because you wouldn't last long enough to, to generate enough power. So if you look at all the other abilities, I mean, it, you know, it, crit chance on all specials, that's great. It's better than the most gears, which only give you crit chance on special one or special two, not both. But those other three abilities. So when maxed out, you get one full bar of power on tag. And 35%, that's a full bar of power, right? Three bars is 100%. Fast power generation, always good. That by itself would be enough to make this a uh, legendary gear. Getting full power back if you knock out the opponent, also pretty spectacular. And getting full power back if enemy takes no damage, that is what made it possible to handle Astral Harness without really batting an eye. So before this, before the Tanti Totem, the focus with your specials often was to get the most or the most efficient way of using your specials is getting the most amount of splash damage. So if you're doing special twos, even if it took a while to get two bars of power, if you could do splash damage with your special two, like say for Ares, where you could do a huge amount of damage on the person in front of you and splash it on other people, that was the most important thing. So b b before Tantu Tome, there are other strategies to get power quickly, right? You could use Batgirl, Razzle Girl, Scimitar, and it made sense to not do as much damage to the person in front of you if it meant you could double up the splash damage on the two opponents that were off screen. So for example, 15% splash damage from special two with the fourth world godly mace is as good as a 30% damage boost, but you're spreading it over other opponents. 50% splash damage from special one with League of Assassin's Knives is as good as a 100% damage boost because you're doing 50% on each of the other opponents. So the change now with Tantu Totem is your priority is to do more damage on the opponent in front of you because if you don't knock them out, you don't get your power back. And that sort of threshold is, is a pretty bright line that if you cross it, it means the fight goes that much faster. And it really has changed the game for every single character that has a passive triggered by specials. Bounty Hunter Lobo is a perfect example of this. His passive is that he does more damage with each special two. The damage over time is longer lasting and the opponent is locked in longer. So when you're only doing a special two, maybe once, twice in a fight, and now you've got the chance to do it over and over and over again, say when you're facing somebody with invulnerabilities like Astro Harness, when you're facing somebody with a revive. So your ability to do repeated special twos is what makes it. But that pales in comparison to the ultimate example of a character that's been completely changed by Tanti Totem, which is a new 52 Wonder Woman. She is now, because of Tanti Totem, she is top tier. Her passive lets the power of Tanti Totem be magnified if you're using a Justice League team where you can have both your teammates tag in potentially with three bars of power just because you started off New 52 Wonder Woman against uh, Astro Harness and Vulnerabilities. That is amazing. Before that, the fact that she gives half of the power that she spends to her teammates, it just didn't happen enough to make a difference with the fights or even to be able to plan a fight strategy around it. I guess the hard thing is, once you've played a team like that with New 52 and Wonder Woman, it's hard to give up that advantage. And the fights don't seem nearly as fun when you're slogging through something that takes a lot longer. Okay, in the store, we've got Dawn of Justice Wonder Woman pack for $24.99. It is a corroborating clue to next week's challenge, which we mentioned earlier was what we expect from the pattern of the challenge cycle it doesn't unlock her in your store you don't get any credits with this particular pack and the the crazy thing is you don't get the dawn of justice gear you get wonder woman's lasso of truth or so you get wonder woman's uh amazonian sword and shield which is the regular one you don't get wonder woman's lasso of truth which is the dawn of justice gear and the only consolation is that chances are when she's the challenge next week that the lasso is going to be the gear you get if you finish nightmare the other new pack this week is Arkham Asylum Pack 1. It's the um, the not as good 
Arkham pack. It's $24.99. It's been that price mostly, uh, $24.99 Canadian. It's been that price mostly when it first came out, it was a couple bucks more, probably exchange rate. And there's one funky week in February 2020, so two and a half years ago, when it was $52.99, more than twice the price. The other sort of weird thing is it's got a picture of Arkham Knight Batman on the cover, but you only get those three characters, Arkham Origins Batman, Arkham Origins Deathstroke, and Arkham Knight Harley Quinn. That description, new more powerful, is a reference to change that happened a long, long time ago, so it's not anywhere near new. It was an old change when Arkham Knight Harley Quinn's, sorry, Arkham Harley Quinn's stats were, um, I keep on getting them mixed up, there's too many Harley Quinns. When Arkham Harley Quinn's stats were buffed and she got the extra part of her passive to give unblockable special two for her teammates. The better pack is the one that has the picture of Arkham Knight Batman, but actually has a chance at getting him in the pack. That other pack was last available just last month, and that was also only $24.99. It's a much better pack, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. We take what we can get. Deathstroke's pretty good. Batman's pretty good. Harley Quinn's not a bad support character. If you're going to go a, a sort of a double barrel team, Batman and Deathstroke's not a bad one if you can get both of them with unblockable special twos okay and so the not so new stuff in the store we've got a second week of the character bundle uh, suicide squad we talked a lot more detail about that last week we've got the survivor pack that is now for the 37th week that's a lot we've got the character bundle batman universe 42nd week We've got the most wanted pack, 49th weeks, another three weeks of that. You know what? That'll be a year of having the most wanted pack in the store. And the cycle of the three 300 nth metal celebration packs, not really a cycle. They've been around for 34 weeks each, except for the Aquam pack, which has been around a couple weeks longer, 36 weeks. And our survivor for one more week until the 5th of October is the fourth world gear set. Phantom Zone is finished fight 62 is still broken and we have double xp this week i am not sure what the occasion is earlier this month it was labor day i don't know what we're celebrating so late in september maybe somebody in the comments can let me know maybe there's somewhere in the world where this is a special occasion last weekend's breakthrough for golds was cyborg batgirl and black adam this coming weekend's is probably going to be deadshot wonder woman static based on the cycle link in the description to reddit thread from devlin 16 that goes over the complete breakthrough cycle and that's it for the regular stuff this is where we used to talk about the glitches but as far as current glitches go we're going to go into more detail every time something significant changes which did not happen this week however even if nothing changes we still do a more detailed review once a month the first week of every month and most recently that was a recap from september the first the only thing probably worth mentioning is that the challenge reset glitch has been confirmed on this week's challenge of Blackest Night Batman. And that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching, but a special thank you goes out to our patrons on Patreon. That would be Bombo Ben, Console Peasant, and Ed Woon at the top tier last word, Cinemac and Muhammad Al Shady at the Your Message Here tier. Sean Farrell, Daniel Simonson, Aaron Mall, Michael DeVries, Brandon C., Irvin Ruiz, Eddie Du, Hoshi127 at the credited level, and Chris Wolf, Scarlett Danny, Awesome Gamer 2 for 1, Pabu RS, Gavin Malott, and Isfar E at the gratitude level. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Komoda.